Hi everyone, this is Jan Nepomniashi versus Magnus Carlsen, played in the recent Super United Rapid and Blitz. This is their Blitz game, let's see what happened here. So Jan kicks off with Knight F3, and he goes for a King's Indian attack now. He gives Magnus the centre, which Magnus duly takes, but in compensation, he gets that King Castle very early doors, pieces safe, and then he wants to strike at the centre in just a moment. So now he goes c4, d5 now from Magnus, he takes the whole centre, and the main move here is actually capturing on d5, play goes from there, but Jan goes for this interesting sideline of queen to a4, so you pin this knight here, and you're threatening to take this pawn, and Magnus now plays bishop to d6 to defend that pawn, again Jan could take on d5, but this move's really interesting and quite striking when you see it, pawn to d4. So that one can be captured in two different ways here. Either one is fine. Magnus takes with the e-pawn here. And now watch Jan's big idea. Well, after takes here, knight recaptures. Now this is the tactical shot. So you take on d4 with the knight and you open up this bishop to attack this one. So after Magnus takes here, Jan then gets the piece back, material is level, but this pawn is really cramping in the heart of the white position, stops the knight coming to c3, and so after castles here, say if you were to retreat this bishop to g2 and try and keep your bishop pair, well then black can just develop and you've got problems actually getting the queen side out here. You know, the knight would have to come to d2, blocks the bishop, not a great square. So that's why Jan actually gives up the bishops in this position here. It is the best move. Pawn recaptures, and then he can capture the pawn, but this one makes the most positional sense to take. Now the knight can come to c3. So bishop h3 from Magnus. The rook moves to the side. Rook b8, pressures here, and now immediately Jan actually gives the pawn back. So first knight c3, queen e7, and now if you go, say, b3 here, there's no kind of knockout shot for black or anything like that. Magnus would just long term apply pressure with the bishops. So this is just one sample line, you know, I found when clicking around. You can bring the rooks in here. And the point being, you can even give a second pawn here. So the queen could snap on c6 in this line, but then the rooks come. This one invades. And this just gives a flavour of what Magnus is playing for with the two bishops, with the pressure. But both players have to be very careful in such a position. White could go tactically wrong, get steamrolled. But black could go wrong, white unravels and is just two pawns up. So you really have to know what you're doing there. But okay, Jan didn't go in for any of this. He didn't try and hold on to the pawn. Instead he goes bishop g5 here. He's leaving the protection. And now you can take this one. Queen takes here, this is the trick. Then rook takes on b2, and okay, the game goes on from here. But instead, Magnus played queen e6 here. And we get to very similar positions that we saw in the game. So uh, bishop f4 played here, now takes on f4, queen recaptures, rook takes on b2. This one centralized, might be invading here. And now this is really an interesting kind of stylistic moment. You can play different moves here, like pawn h6, Rook e8, queen e7, lots of kind of waiting, nudgy moves that are fine for black. But Magnus actually goes queen f5, offers a queen trade to go into an endgame. So typical of his style. He's the endgame goat, of course, in my opinion. And after these ones come off, now he's just trying to squeeze blood from a stone in typical Magnus style. So rook d6 played, rook c8 defends the pawn, rook c1 x-rays it, good move. King f8 from Magnus, he's looking to run in here, and so the rook preempts that, drops back to d4, and it's also now swinging to a4, where it not only defends, but attack as, uh, attacks as well. A really optimal position for a rook. Bishop e6 now played, and this is a key idea for Magnus. He needs to apply pressure here. Also, we see the bishop coming to c4 to apply pressure here, because otherwise this knight will activate, say e4, and then this pawn's under fire, this one could be under fire, so black has to get the counterplay. Rook a4 now played, rook c7 defends, and now pawn f3, looking to activate the king, Magnus goes pawn c5, king f2, pawn h5 here, and now we just see some clarity of pawn structure on the king side, 
And now the action's switching back to the queen side. This is the key battleground. So this one's attacked. The knight wants to move at some point. So bishop c4 from Magnus. Excellent move. Keeps this knight honest in its defensive work because it has to hold on to this pawn. Also keeps an eye on a2. Rook a4 from Yan. The bishop drops back. And now rook a5, Yan is basically offering a draw here if Magnus wants to repeat. But Magnus wants to fight, that was typical of his tournament. He goes king g7, now the knight came to b5. A great move by Yan, hits both of these points here. Rook d7 was played, gives this c pawn, but then black chops this one, so the material is still level. Now there is pressure here of course, but if you try and snap that one off, say with knight takes, well then you invade with the rooks and there's big problems for the king. Say if rook e5, well then bishop c4, this is much better for black. So Yan didn't go after the second pawn. Instead he goes knight c3, good defensive manoeuvre. The bishop came back to e6, rook a3 now, overprotects this knight here. And now rook c2 from Magnus and he just manages to outfox Yan in this position here. So knight e4 played, offering the rook exchange. And now a really classy move, bishop to c4. It looks really scary to do this, to self-pin your rook. But you can't sort of start trying to attack it like this. I mean, then you crash through. This would actually be leading to mate. So you can't do that one. And equally, there's a problem with this pawn. You should go rook e3 as the best move to defend it. It looks a bit ugly, but it does glue everything together. But instead in this position here, we saw knight to c3 and Yana had overlooked a tactic here. So if you want to pause and look for it, please do so. So here Magnus plays, bishop takes on e2, using the fact that if the knight takes, then you lose a whole rook here. This is the problem. So rook a2 was played, Yan's just lost a clean pawn here. Magnus takes on a2, the knight recaptures, rook to d2 invades, it hits that knight, so it drops back to c3. We had a discovered check, but at least these ones are on dark squares, you're not losing any material. The king came to e3, rook d3 check, king e4. The rook dropped back, covers the seventh, and now great play by Yan, looking for activation. Rook to a5, hits the bishop, but it drops back with check, king e3, and now pawn a6. Magnus just sets up this beautiful defensive construction. He just plays this part of the game so precisely and perfectly here. So after pawn a6, we had knight a4, looks to come in here, but now rook d5 from Magnus just shuts everything down. And if you swap off the rooks, well this end game is winning with the outside pass pawn, also the bishop which outperforms the knight when you've got pawns on both sides of the board, given it's that long range piece. So rook d5 played, knight c5 came instead, but unless you're actually crashing through here with tactics, then you've got a problem because this is now pinned to the rook, and Magnus goes bishop c6. Again, just such a classy move, because if the knight takes, you lose your rook, and if the rook takes, you lose your knight and protect the bishop at the same time. So Yan can't do anything here, but wait with the king. He goes king to f2, and now Magnus gets the pawns going on the king side, but first he actually tucks back here. This is such a classy move. Just prophylaxis against a knight e6 check. So now we had king e3 back, pawn f6, king f2, and now Magnus gets these pawns rolling, pawn g5 here, Yan takes, and now you've got this chance to create that outside pass pawn. f4 was played by Yan, desperately trying to shake something up there, exchange pawns if he can, but can you guess what Magnus played here? Best move in the position, test your endgame knowledge. So here Magnus played pawn to h4, best move. Now we had takes on h4, if you take here, then the problem is the pawn is just running through, completely unstoppable. I mean, say you tried rook a1, well then you lose your knight. This is of course a massive problem. And if you try and run back with the king, well then we push, king comes and we check like this, you can't stop the pawn going through. So this is the problem here. That's why Yan took here. Pawn recaptures, but it actually just delays the inevitable because now king f2, king g6, the pawn still runs down, but this time supported by the king that's marching in. Pawn f5 played, rook d2 check, king g1, pawn h3, 
And here Jan threw in the towel. The pawn is unstoppable. Look at that bishop. Just ultimate excellent play by Magnus Carlsen. I hope you enjoyed this game. To see another amazing one from him, click here. And to subscribe to the channel, do see below. Never miss a future video. And thanks very much for watching. See you soon.